Hello, everybody. Uh, Timberwolf05, or 05. I think that you're allowed to make a channel. I don't see why not. Hi, Cupman64, who are you? Please put your, uh, let me just put this actually in the chat. When you ask a question, um, put your name in the question first. I believe that you can use your um, DaVinci Academy account to create a, an account or create a channel so you can ask questions using your DaVinci account. Remy, how was my day? My day um, was good. Weekend was good. My day is going well so far. I just had to finalize grades and stuff, but I don't super want to talk about that today because that's kind of boring. <clears throat> see here, how many people do we have? We've got 10 people. All right. Participants. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll just do Q and A, um, talk about some tangents and stuff. Um, okay. So I just wanted to talk about different, different things that's, that's going on, check up on anybody that uh, wants to get in on this because I know it can get a little bit lonely at home. I've been feeling that way for sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Remy shaved your head. Nice. Nice. Okay. So if you have questions for me, uh, feel free to just put them in the chat. I'd love to answer them for you all. So far we just have 10 people or 11 people. My guess is that we'll have a few more <clears throat> join in in a few minutes. All right. Do I have Minecraft? No, I do not. How's quarantine with three kids? Um, it's good. Just uh, hanging out with, uh, hey Vince, yeah, this is good. Logging with logging in with your school account is much much easier. So I know who everybody is. Hello, Alaya. So quarantine with three kids. We're not like officially quarantined, but we are doing social distancing. So I haven't really seen anybody except for my kids. Um, I saw a few people from afar today here at the school, but it's just kind of, you know, again from afar. And we go on walks and we watch a lot of movies. We've been watching some, for some reason, my one-year-old really loves anime. She usually doesn't like, like movies, but uh, we watched My Neighbor Totoro um, and Kiki's Delivery Service, which are like classic children's anime movies. Um, we also watched Mary and the Witch's Flower. Uh, and yeah, my one-year-old and all, all the other ones, all my, all my kids really enjoy it and I enjoy them too. So it's good. I had never seen, um, Kiki's delivery service or my neighbor Totoro. So 
My goes my dad goes to Home Depot every three days. Yeah, I heard Remy. I saw that in the in the uh, in the chat. It's cool. How how short did you shave it? Like all the way down to the scalp, or like quarter inch or half inch? My parents took me to the store and they bought like three hundred dollars of groceries for some reason because they were kind of panic buying. Yeah, um, I think that a lot of people are doing that. I went to the grocery store. I didn't buy three hundred dollars worth of stuff. I bought about a hundred dollars worth of uh, groceries. So not a ton, but um, we had just a couple weeks ago, we bought a, a chest freezer. So that's actually coming in handy. So you went all the way down to the scalp, Remy, that's cool. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so it's it's been good though. We spend time with my family and my wife and kids are good and yeah, it's just a crazy time. Harmons. <laughs> no, I didn't go to Harmons. I, I, uh, I shop at uh, Smith's up by my house. Okay. Apparently, we're all stuck on Remy's haircut, which is fine. Um, yeah, what else is going on? Oh, by the way, I'm going to be posting on Canvas for anyone that's uh, interested. The marble racing videos, um, the gels marble racing, the Marbula one. If you haven't, if you're not, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you haven't been paying attention. Um, <clears throat> the Marbula one is actually. This is so funny. His had a, um, a temporary contract with ESPN. <laughs> ESPN has no, um, ESPN has no, um, like sports, right? Baseball, soccer, basketball, all canceled, right? So, um, Marbula One is on ESPN. It's pretty funny. Um, Go Team Galactic. Oh, man, if you, uh, I'm not going to tell you any spoilers from yesterday's race. Um, let me pull it up. Uh, I'll put the the link in the chat here because it's important stuff. Marbula. Um, yeah, so it was a good race, though. I'll tell you what. Very interesting race happened. Pultar! <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pulsar. Here's what's funny. So here's what's funny about Pulsar, right? So Pulsar is the name of the marble on Team Galactic that I'm a fan of. Um, but Pulsar is a type of star that is known for spinning really fast. So I think that's a very um, fitting name for a racing marble. So if you want to go and watch that, uh, watch that video. Um, that was posted yesterday of the, I think it was the short circuit that um, the, the racers did, the racing marbles did. It was fun. Um, Alaya asked about the earthquake and Elliot was not very kind and reprimanding her. If you want to talk about the earthquake, we can. YouTube video about pulsars. I actually have a YouTube video on my personal. Um, it's the only YouTube video that I've made on my personal account. My like personal me, not as a teacher, but as a person about pulsars. It was part of a uh, project that I did at Utah State. Kind of fun pulsars and magnetars and neutron stars. Man, I honestly have to shut up as per usual. You're fine, Elliot. We only have nine people, so. We started with 11 and then I think some people got bored and uh, left, so there's that, which is fine. I just wanted to give everyone the opportunity if they take it or not. Hey, Gavin. Um, I wonder if we're gonna only have 11 people, if we shouldn't do this as a meet. Yeah, hi, Jackson, I saw you earlier. Aliyah, you wanna talk about the uh, you want to talk about the earthquake? Um, 
the earthquake uh, last week was pretty fascinating for sure. Um, had a magnitude of 5.7. The focus was 12 kilometers down. Oh, that's right. You live in Salt Lake. That's crazy. Um, I'm sure that there was a lot of swaying going on. What what level do you live on, Elia? Um, because it can be a can be a pretty yeah a big old shaker. Um, <clears throat> it was interesting that the focus was 12 kilometers down. Oh, you were in Salt Lake as well, Remy. Yeah, Salt Lake was a little bit closer to the epicenter um, than we are here in Ogden. <laughs> Gavin slept through it. Yeah, there are a few aftershocks in Salt Lake. There was one yesterday, right? I think it was like a 3.4, 3.5. So you live on the fourth floor. My uh, father-in-law works here in Ogden. Um, he works in one of the taller buildings in downtown Ogden on the top level, and he was... He was swaying pretty good back and forth. Woke me up, says Layton. Yeah, I think it woke up a lot of people. Woke up my wife as well. She was sleeping. My two older kids were just sitting watching a show. And then, um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, pretty crazy stuff. Um, I, had, I had never really felt a, an earthquake before, so... It was kind of fun to feel it. Um, let's see here. This morning, there were some small earthquakes. There was a 2.9 at 8.12 this morning. Same place, just near Magna. 2.9 is pretty hard to feel though. It's a small one. But yeah, within the last day or two, we've had quite a few just smaller aftershocks. But pretty crazy times. Um, earthquakes are really cool, but. All right. I will check it out, Remy. Okay. I'll check it out. Let's see here. Yeah, actually, you can leave. I'm just, I'm just doing this to check up on anybody that wants to. Uh, anybody who wants to check in and ask questions. Let's see here. I was in the shower wondering why my parents were stomping around upstairs. <laughs> That's funny. All right, um, let's see here. Hey, Jackson, and whoever Mr. Moistuler is, let's, uh, let's clean it up. Okay, so what questions do you have about uh, the world, the universe, the meaning of all things? Anybody? Anybody have any questions? Okay. Turn himself into a pickle. Man, Rick and Morty, that's one of my very, very favorite um, shows. Bagpipes? I didn't bring my bagpipes. Oh, don't get into questions of the universe. <laughs> um, I do have my practice chanter. <laughs> Um, it's kind of a silly little thing. Uh, practice chanter. They're fun. But questions of the universe. Why not, Leighton? Why don't you want to get into questions of the universe, huh? Hmm? Why are you against questions of the universe? 
What is that? So this is my practice chanter. It's a, uh, it's, it's what you practice the bagpipes on without blowing people's ears out. Um, yeah, it just, it has the same finger holes and, uh, yeah. Aren't we overdue for a big earthquake? So this is a good question, Remy. I think that a lot of people, don't you need the bag? No. So um, I'll just answer the bagpipe question quickly and then the earthquake. Uh, for the, when you're actually playing the bagpipes, you do. But the practice chanter is just, it's just the thing that you hold at the bottom of the bagpipes that actually plays the tune. Um, so the practice chanter and then the, the actual chanter is what you put on the bagpipes to, to actually play the, the song. Vince, afraid of the truth. Question. Leighton, because for me, it's questioning religion and I don't want to address the stress of all that. Okay. Makes sense. Um, I don't know what part of uh, religion that would address, but I don't don't want to uh, cause any undue stress for you. Uh, all right, guys, you're just going to ignore the fact that I started to crochet. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so um, as far as Remy's question of aren't we overdue for a big earthquake? Not really. <clears throat> a big earthquake, bigger than the one that we experienced. Yes, we will have some earthquakes in the future. I don't know when, but not anytime soon, probably. That will be bigger than the one that we experienced last Wednesday. Will they be huge? No. So for, for reference, the one that we felt yes last week was a 5.7. The earth, earthquake that is predicted to happen that would happen from the Wasatch Fault would be like a 6.5 or a 6.6. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's probably – there will be some big earthquakes here again bigger than the one we experienced last time, but none of them will be huge. We, the fault, the, the Wasatch Fault just isn't powerful enough to really generate earthquakes that would kill thousands of people here. Um, maybe, you know, a few people would be injured and a few people would die, but it wouldn't be like a catastrophic event. Okay. We are overdue for the Yellowstone volcano going off with that big earthquake. We are not overdue for the Yellowstone volcano. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Moisture. By the way, who is that? Bye, bye Remy. Um, who are you, Mr. Moisture? Because you are wrong about the Yellowstone volcano. The Yellowstone volcano will probably not erupt for at least another few thousand years. Dennis, who is Dennis? We don't have, I don't have a Dennis in my class. Nick Lyde? Okay, Neil Kosho, can I come to school and crash your stream? Can I come to the school and crash your, as in like, come in here and be a part of the stream? If you want the glasses kid I don't know who you're talking about I do not know who you're talking about but we'll figure it out I guess um yeah hey Leighton, if you want to come be the part of the stream, just as, as long as you stay um, one crow shot length away from me. Dennis McBride. I don't know who that is. All right, squished bacon. What does the bag do for the bagpipes? Um, we get it your time. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay, Lane. Um, 
one crochet length unit away from each other. Um, the bagpipe, so for bagpipes, you blow into the bag and then the bag inflates with air. And then from there, there's four different ways that the air goes. It goes through three drones, which go over the shoulders here, and they make a drone sound, like the wah, that's the drones. Um, and then the uh, and then the chanter is the part that you actually play with your fingers and makes the the sound um, of the like the melody. So, like this this chanter here, right? Right is a uh, makes the actual sound. So. Same deal with the bagpipes. The bag part of the bagpipes just collects the air and then diverts it to the other places. So really, when you play the bagpipes, you're actually playing four instruments at once. Leighton just stands in the closet. What? Watch out, I threw a rock crochet. Um, <laughs> freedom. Thank you, Gavin. Yes, the Highlands. Um, watch out. I threw... You, well, first of all, Jackson, you, you uh, didn't spell through correctly. Um, why is the chanter not loud? Um, it is actually quite loud. I'm just not playing it close to the microphone. <laughs> So it is actually quite loud. I'm sure that people can hear it down the hall. My apologies. <laughs> you threw a rock. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but um, other than you literally threw a rock, I don't know why I need to watch out. Um, but yeah, I, it's, I don't know. A lot of people are feeling putting my energy into fishing to feed my... Oh, geez. Oh, Jackson. So, yeah. The, um, the world feels pretty crazy right now. Um, hopefully, you all are not feeling too worried about it. Um, I mean, it, it is it is definitely scary, but it isn't anything that we need to be really panicking over. Life will continue on after this stuff. I rule with an iron fist. Wow, Jackson. Um, yeah. Literally, the worst part about this virus is being left alone with my own thoughts all day. That's a good point. It is... It is a little bit scary um, how we have to be distanced from everyone. This is part of the reason why I'm doing this stream. Leighton crashes the stream, but not, but has to stay. Oh, behind me, right? Okay, in that closet. Oh, it makes sense now. Now I get it. You like this section of my life? Yeah, so it'll be interesting when we look back at the year 2020. Um, should be crazy. I really don't know what's going to happen um, in terms of like the, the history books and so forth. But I think that it's it's not uh, it's not anything that we can't handle as a species for sure. Is it bad if you now talk to animals since there is no else, no one else to talk to? No, that is not bad. That is completely normal. Normal, and Jackson is not. That is not called schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is very different. I think we should reboot 2020. Yeah, it is kind of a crazy time, for sure. Um, Wilson. <laughs> 
talking talking to volleyballs. That's that's a little bit odd, but if you hear your animals talking back, see now that's a problem. Yeah, if you hear your animals talking back, then you're hallucinating. So yeah, well, we only have 11 people. I was, I was actually anticipating more, but um, 11 isn't that many. So I guess we could have done this as a Google Meet. I didn't want to, um, I just didn't want to overwhelm a Google Meet. Um, do we want to do a Google Meet where everyone can talk ask questions or do we just want to finish it out here? Layton, if you if you legitimately want to come to the school you can. AJ, yeah, sleeping in is nice. Do you play tennis? Uh not competitively. <laughs> I know how to play tennis. Um, I know how to score tennis and I know how to, um, I don't know, participate in tennis. I'm generally okay at it, but not great. Google meet says Layton. All right. In the chat, do we want to do a Google meet or do we want to stay on the stream on the YouTube stream? So we've got one vote for me, one vote for for this, another vote for this. Okay. All right. I don't I don't care, says AJ. I don't care. Okay, well I guess we'll just finish it out here. Make it less complex. Um does anyone have any questions about science or the future, the universe, our place in in the world, animals, plants, the earth? Did you email it to me? Email what to me? Elliot. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, I don't have a new email, so. All right. Um, let me think about something cool and uplifting. Um, oh, the other night I went out and saw the International Space Station go overhead. That was cool. Um, I'm going to pull up a an app that I have that tells me when the space station will be visible. Space station will be visible, will be visible tonight, but not very bright. It'll be pretty bright tomorrow night. So if you want to go out and see the space station tomorrow night, in fact, tomorrow night will probably be the best time to do it because it'll be high up in the sky. Um, that's pretty cool. The space station tomorrow night will be going overhead at what time? 8.34. And it will be north. So if you go out at 8.34 p.m. tomorrow, um, you can... Watch the International Space Station go overhead, which is always cool. There are three people living on the space station right now. Um, how many people are in space right now? Dot com. What? What in the world? Um. So if you want to check check it out, how many people are on 
are in space right now.com. It's one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, websites. How many people are in space right now.com? There it is. Learn some more about them. All right. Do you have, let's see here. So as far as CRISPR goes, do you think we could ever make a unicorn per se? Could we? Yes. With, uh, with gene editing, we could make all sorts of things. Um, however, and again, ever, so you, you say that we could ever make a, a unicorn. Yes, we could ever. Ever is a very long time, right? And humanity will, humanity will be around for a while. I really don't foresee us going extinct anytime soon. Um, Elliot and Jackson are just having a little conversation within the tw next 20 years. No, I don't think so. And the, within, I mean, the number of genes that you would have to alter in order to make a horse into a unicorn would be enormous, enormous, enormous. Um, just to, I mean, you'd have to alter probably at least thousands of genes. Um, so I don't think that it would be a very good um, bet to say that within 20 years we could make a unicorn. But, but CRISPR can do a lot of really cool things. And I really do think that it will be used for good going forward to help a lot of people with genetic disorders and so forth. Um, last chance, says Leighton. What do you mean last, last chance? Any other questions? CRISPR, I think, is a really important um, is a really important technology, just because we have the ability to change the the genetic makeup of someone. I think that it's um, I think it's going to do some really cool things, to be honest, um, because we can get rid of genetic diseases. So for instance, if we talk about like um, ALS or um, cystic fibrosis, all of these things that are genetic and we can program them, program them out of people, um, imagine how cool that is, or Alzheimer's. Um, Layton, that is okay if you come and bug me. I, I think I already told you that like three times. You can come and talk with me. And the school is still open, everyone. If you want, if you need to come and talk with a teacher or whatever, you can. I will be here until probably two o'clock. Um, but CRISPR is awesome. It really is really, really cool. If you don't know what CRISPR is, what I'm talking about, it's a gene editing um, technology where we can take a gene from one thing and put it into another thing. So for instance, if we, if someone is having a baby and they both, and the parents know that they have the, the gene for ALS, which is what Stephen Hawking had. Um, it's also called Lou Gehrig's disease. It's a really debilitating neurological disease. Um, the, uh, the, the parents might have the gene for this disease or this disorder and can ask that 
their fetus, right, their their unborn child be genetically altered so that their their child won't have that disease. Um, and we can do that for sure. Um, and that's really cool. Gavin says, that the, what about the ethics? So apparently Gavin's mom is listening in as well. Hello, um, Gavin's mom. Um, the ethics, um, the ethics of it are really serious. I know that a lot of people have like serious questions about that and that's fine. Um, but all science is a tool. Every technology that we make is a, as a species is a tool that we can use for good or for evil. So for instance, we look at nuclear technology, nuclear technology has been used for evil to create nuclear weapons. However, none of those nuclear weapons have been detonated on people, which is good. Um, but we also use nuclear technology to create energy to power the world. So that's a, it, it, it's a dichotomy, right? All things, we use electricity for good things. We use electricity for bad things. All technologies are tools that can be used for good or for bad. And I am a, an optimist. Most people do good things if they want, if, if they are given the ability to do good things. And I think that it, the real or moral argument that people will say, oh, is it ethical to edit the genes of a human being? I think that if you have the ability to make someone's life better, then you have the responsibility to do that. So if you have the ability to, re to reduce the chance of someone getting a fatal disease like ALS or um, you know cystic fibrosis or one of these genetic disorders, if you have the ability to eliminate that or Alzheimer's, you have the moral responsibility to, to do it for them, right? With great power comes great responsibility. Um, okay. Come bug you, sweet. How hard do I have to slap a chicken to cook it? Um, someone has already done that, uh, that calculation for you. How hard slap chicken? I will give this physics major calculates copy and paste. If you want to read up on how hard you'd have to slap a chicken, it's right there for you. Okay, going back. I'm harmless without Jackson, but when it comes back, the bad comes to <laughs> the ethics debate comes into play. Let's see here. ALS, not ASL, yeah, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. It's the same disease that Stephen Hawking had. It's a debilitating disease where the, the nerves um, and muscles deteriorate. It's really bad. Um, we haven't, I come from the cosmos. We haven't detonated nuclear weapons on people yet. Yes, it's true. The World War II, those were not nuclear weapons. Those are, were atomic weapons. There's a difference. <clears throat> um, the, the two bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki um, in Japan in 1945 were atomic bombs. Um, Fat Boy and Little Man. And they were not nuclear weapons. They were atomic weapons. Nuclear weapons are much more powerful than atomic weapons. Um, they, they, atomic weapons use fission, which is breaking the atom apart. Nuclear weapons use fusion, which is ramming atoms together. And you get a lot more energy out of fusion than you get out of fission. So I think that, Again, I'm going to go back to this because I think this is a super, super important thing to, to discuss, even though there's only eight of you. Um, science is a tool. Science allows us to do good things or bad things. But most of humanity is good. And that is what is so cool about us. We are empathetic. We don't want to use our power for evil most of the time. We want to help other people. We want to do the, the quote unquote right thing, right? Um, so genetic editing, 
I think is a necessary thing. This is one thing that people will talk about with stem cells. If you don't know what stem cells are, they're, they are cells that develop very early on that can create any part of the body. They can make any part of the body. And people have been really, really against this for a few reasons. But I honestly think that if we have the ability to develop stem, stem cells so that we can, like, this is crazy. People break their back and they are paralyzed and we use stem cell treatments and we can cure They can, we can cure them. We have the, we have the responsibility to do that. Hydrogen bombs, <clears throat> hydrogen bombs are nuclear weapons. So atomic weapons or fu or fission weapons versus hydrogen or fusion or called what's called hydro nuclear, not hydro, um, thermonuclear weapons except for politicians again I think that a lot of politicians have good um, intentions there's a lot of corruption in politics um, but I think a lot of politicians have good intentions and they th they think what they're doing is good whether or not they're right is a different discussion um, a lot of politicians make very uninformed decisions so we've been going for 40 minutes. Congratulations for those of you who have actually stuck around. Um, any other questions for me? I, I know that this is a crazy and scary time. However, um, I really do think that we need to be positive. We need to have a positive outlook on the world and look at what is going well out there. Um, we can always um, look at the negatives of the world. And again, it is a scary time. However, there's so much good in the world still, and there's so much that we need to be thankful for right now. Um, I know that this disease seems scary, but um, we have beaten much scarier diseases, much, much scarier diseases before. Um, so don't be, don't be too negative about the world right now. We're, we're going to get through this, and humanity has a fantastic and bright future, okay? A very, very bright future. We, we're we going to do great things as a species um, going forward. We're going to greatly increase lifetimes for people, drastically reduce the number of um, diseases. Elliot, cancer, we're working on it, man. We're working on it. One thing that one way that we could be cancer eventually is you can't get cancer if all of your organs are artificial. Um, if you if we three D print um, organs, not just we could do biological ones or we could do just artificial ones, then they can't get cancer. So it's impossible to have a. Uh, liver cancer if your liver is made out of plastic and metal when do we think that, when do I think that we'll go back to school August of next year August of well August of this year <laughs> when the next school year starts I, I uh, as this continues on I do not foresee the very very earliest the very earliest that I could foresee us coming back to school would be May. But um, at that point, at the end, it, in the middle or beginning of May, at that point, I don't know if it's going to be worth it to come back. So I think that more than likely we will just finish the, the year out um, online, which... I mean, we're here, right? The nine of you that are sticking around, we're here, we're 
finishing up this this chat and a lot of you have been active on the canvas stuff so it, i think it's honestly going pretty well the prophesizer <laughs> i don't know if it's a prophecy it's just a prediction made on, on evidence which is exactly what science is <laughs> i'm no prophet i'm just predicting using the scientific data that has been given to me. <laughs> Big brain time. I put Jackson in timeout and he didn't come back. Oops. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, again, the very, very earliest, I do not foresee us coming back to school before May 1st. So I, I am very confident that we will have um, the entire month of April and the remaining few days of uh, March online. All right, any other questions? We're losing people like flies here. We only have seven left, so I'm gonna Assume that we all want to be done. I'm going to give you exactly one minute to type out a question. Yeah, go for it, Elliot. Have a have a good lunch with your dad. Ah. How tall are you? Oh, sure. I'm six, you can you can come in. Just stand right. Here. Guess who's here? Take your book. I don't know what to do with your book. Can I just put it back in your shelf? Um, uh, I forgot that you borrowed this book from me. It was good. Vincent says hi. Hi. <laughs> Leighton is very out of focus, but that's okay. There we go. Um, no, I was just refocusing. Vince, if you don't, if you don't want to be done, then ask me a question, man. Oh, where's my folder? My own folder. <laughs> you, did you lose it? No, it's over here. Okay, well, I think that we're going to finish it up now. It's been 50 minutes. Thanks for the questions, everybody. Hopefully, you're all doing well. You're all great. Keep on doing what you're doing. But I don't have any questions. I just want to. I just want you to keep talking. We miss you oh, that's being our teacher. <laughs> I I appreciate that, Vince. Um, if I just keep on talking, all I'm going to talk about is I'm going to wax um, poetic about the future of humanity and how wonderful things are in, in the world and um, how grateful we should be. But um, Vince, what do you think? You think, uh, what do you think about self-driving cars, Vince? What do you think about self-driving cars, Vince? Uh, it's a great question. I like driving but it's probably better for everyone if humans don't drive because humans are idiots. Leighton says that they like driving, but that it's probably safer if everyone doesn't drive because you probably couldn't hear that because this microphone only picks up within like half a meter. Um, who else is here? That's my question. We have six people here. Only Vince is participating in the chat. Roll call. This is freaking England. This freaking doesn't want to stand up. I'm mad at that. <laughs> well, stand the up. bottom isn't flat. Can I wait? Is it this fixed? Probably won't be a good idea for you to drive, Vince. Well, then self-driving cars are your, are your solution. I really think that uh, people are going to be dumbfounded by how quickly we will just uh, essentially eliminate car accident deaths. It's actually really exciting. Hi, Maddie. I got off a go-kart ride the other day and everyone hated me. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Vince, you're 15, right? So probably you will drive. I mean, because self-driving cars aren't going to be here next year. But probably by the time you're my age, yeah, by the time you're my age, more than likely, all cars will be self-driving. All new cars and then old cars will be um, old cars will be retrofitted to be self-driving. Okay. I'm gonna call it. Thanks guys. Um, hey Vince, if you if you really just want to hear me talk, just go to the YouTube channel and watch some of my YouTube videos. <laughs> uh, hopefully it's not live. It's true, it's not live. You can't ask questions. But Having gone back and watched a few clips, um, I can testify that it is quite entertaining. Okay, bye.